Well, it certainly seems like this year's NADEX exhibition is jam-packed with ideas for making life easier and providing more independence for people. Now, when it comes to maximising independence, the government's introduction of individual budgets for disabled people has been a huge step forward. To find out more, our reporter Helen Wright is at the Department of Work and Pensions with the Minister for Disabled People. Thanks, Martin. Yes, I'm with Jonathan Shaw, the Minister for Disabled People. Minister, tell me what the government is doing to give disabled people greater control over the services that they receive. Well, they come in different forms, don't they? It might be care and support in the home, but it also might be about support at getting into work and staying in work. Now, what we've done, we've seen people uh, getting their own individual budgets. So rather than just having to accept what the councils say they can have, i.e. this is the person that's caring for you, this is important, supporting you, they've given them the money and the person who uh, says, right, I don't want you uh, supporting me, I want this person. And I've met scores of people who say it's so much better, rather than being a passive recipient, they're in control, they're taking charge. And what impact do you think individual budgets will have on individuals' lives? Well, we know because we've uh, been piloting them and it's important that we pilot them, uh, get them right. We don't want uh, social services, care services, support services to fall over because then people won't have confidence in our reforms. But we have been piloting and the feedback that we get from people is very positive. And I've met people myself who say, I'm in charge, I'm in control. Now, we all want that uh, in every aspect of our lives, um, disabled people uh, in particular. So how do individual budgets work in practice? Well, there are various forms of them. Uh, uh, the simplest form is called a direct payment. The individual receives the money uh, for their domiciliary care to them and then they purchase that service. We can widen that out to look at uh, employment uh, uh, funding. Uh, we can uh, widen that out to look at uh, healthcare funding as well, which we're, again we're bringing in legislation to allow. Whereas one could see how you might be in receipt of chiropody services. So rather than saying, oh, you've got to go and see that chiropodist uh, on that particular day, you can take that money and actually put it into the pot and determine which chiropodist uh, you might see in, in, in various d different sectors. Now, we've talked about empowering disabled yeah. people, but what about extra support for carers who might you know, work with or share a home with a disabled person? What about the carers in this? Well, it's a, that's a very important point. And as society gets older, more of us are going to be need to be cared for. More of us will be carers. And when we talk about carers, we must remember they come in you know, all different forms. Some people uh, care for just a few hours a week to the point where there's almost total dedication uh, to support uh, uh, loved ones, uh, to support uh, siblings, etc. So it varies for forms, varying different ages. We've introduced uh, support for people so they can have a break. I think that uh, carers frequently say, I just need to be able to have a little bit of time for myself in order that I can carry on. So we've introduced uh, money available for people to do that. I think that's important. And importantly as well, uh, many carers uh, want to work. And our people at the job centres uh, need to understand the particular needs of uh, carers. And so we're training up staff, specialist staff, uh, so they can better understand the particular needs of carers. Now you've talked about getting carers into work. Can we talk now about getting people off incapacity benefit and into work? How is that system working at the moment? First of all, there's a thing called linking rule. People are quite anxious if they're on incapacity benefit. If they take a job and they find out that it doesn't work, they might then never get their benefits back. And so that acts as a barrier. So what we've said is that if someone's in, on incapacity benefit, if they get a job and it doesn't work out, they can up to two years return to that system. Obviously we need checks and balances along the way and that's really worked for a lot of people, providing them with the confidence after being unemployed perhaps uh, for a long time. But we're changing incapacity benefit. Uh, from 2010, current uh, incapacity benefit uh, recipients will go on to the new employ employment support allowance, which new customers go on to. And it changes the concept, it turns it on its head. Rather than saying what people can't do, we want to find out what people can do. Minister, thank you very much. And from the Department for Work and Pensions, it's back to you in the studio.